Caddis Maximus here, this time with a review of the DCF 902 DeWalt's new little 12 volt extreme subcompact brushless cordless impact wrench time this time versus the cordless impact driver. Surprisingly enough, the impact wrench actually has, well, on paper, 4.2 foot pounds more torque, 50 inch pounds uh, more torque than the quarter inch hex impact driver. Somebody had asked about the screwdriver version of these. The only it's like a thousand RPM, it's single speed, it's really, really short. So the only situation I could recommend that is if you're driving, you know, a lot of screws and assembly work with the kind of power that the motor has, it should be pretty good for uh four inch deck screws, that kind of thing, but it just seems to be the least versatile. When I get the drill, you get two speeds, etc. etc. The impact wrench. I like more for the same reason as the uh, drill. It's more versatile. You get an impact wrench. You get a little bit more power. And then you can always just use an adapter. And I'll do a little uh, demonstration in a minute here. Now DeWalt with other manufacturers does have 3 8 inch anvils for their larger and more powerful 20 volt series impact drivers as well as bigger impact wrenches. But uh, not for the super compact. This performance is pretty good. But right now it looks like Milwaukee has the most powerful or arguably the most uh, powerful the compact 12 volt brushless impact wrenches they really are pretty stout I personally like the DeWalt and the slide battery we noticed that Makita finally uh, just went ahead and uh, took their medicine and started making slide batteries because of the grip uh, the way the Milwaukee's and those torpedo batteries the way it flares out right where your hand is the smallest with your smallest fingers it's ergonomics really don't work for me even though I really you know they seem like a nice tool and you can get those really high capacity battery packs it didn't seem like DeWalt was trying to uh, quite step up to that level I don't know how far they're gonna push their this line they have a couple extra tools like a little oscillating tool and like a screwdriver we'll see anyway it's pretty nice and the way this was on sale they have these sets for ninety nine dollars which was the individual tool two batteries a charger and a bag. If I can grab it all, like right here, gra grasp it all, excuse me. Where they had the hex impact driver and drill set for 170 for 30 more dollars, you could have the option of upgrading to the impact wrench and you get a second charger, a second bag, and two extra batteries, all for just $30 more. Or you could get the hex driver for the same $30 more. So it was a weird thing with the way it was sale for 200 bucks you got four batteries and two tools and the wrench the only real new features is has been mentioned is they have a new electronic switching power level I'll do the first criticism this is a sticker on top and get this getting thrown around tool bags and you know tradesmen with bits and hardware that sticker is just gonna get obliterated it's already been peeling up just trying to press this little button, but I do like that it has bright green LEDs and one, two, three. What's interesting is you can only interact with the LEDs during the 20 seconds that the front light is turned on, and then they'll stay on for like another 10 seconds after that, but you can't adjust it. I will also say that this little pre-programmed precision mode is operates differently on the wrench than it does on the quarter-inch impact driver, which is interesting. My other criti big criticism here is in low. It is low. But in reverse on low, it's full power. And I prefer it just to be low in all directions when I have it set to low. And of course, high is full power. They're advertising 125 foot pounds of torque, which is, you know, they do the nut busting torque. I don't quote that. It, but it seems like it has a definitely a respectable amount of torque. And using an adapter, it's actually really nice for uh, driving screws, just like any other impact driver. But you just have the ease and convenience of just being able to throw on common 3 8 inch impact sockets. In the precision mode, it drives the fastener down. It will detect when there's an increase in resistance, will impact a few times, pause for half a second, and then just blast full power. And in reverse, it's supposed to blast full power and then detect, do kind of the opposite, where it detects a dramatic reduction in the amount of uh, load on the motor, indicating the fastener is running free, and then slow itself down. And I actually have a perfect fastener to test that. 
you know, on a quick side note, Milwaukee, DeWald, or any of these others, I think this DeWald has around 15 foot-pounds less torque than the equivalent Milwaukee. Milwaukee has one that's even a little bit shorter than this. It's pretty, like I said, pretty nice. But I just wish they had better ergonomics and, quite frankly, a better lighting system. These new generation, I'll say, have a triple gear gearbox, and we'll uh, get into that at the end in a real abbreviated teardown. Here's the old DCF887 uh, here. There's its light. Here's this new upgraded light. It's actually quite a bit brighter, and it looks like they increased the color temperature from around 5,000 degrees to the traditional car HID 8,000, or excuse me, 6,000 degrees. So much, much brighter. The other note is these little impact drivers, especially the 12 volts, the, they're pretty good, but compared to an air wrench, I mean, you can get an air wrench that is, you know, more than an inch shorter and puts out triple the power. Just to give you an idea, there's uh, still a lot of uh, limitations, a lot of it just dealing with the batteries. They could give this thing probably 200 foot-pounds or plus true torque, but it would liquidate one of these batteries in three minutes. All right, some quick testing here, and I forgot to mention somebody had asked. Uh, the big deal about this 12-volt uh, brushless drill is, yeah, it will do three-inch deck screws in second gear. And I did want to demonstrate that. No problem. I have this, you can get these nice little adapters. I like these adapters, particularly this Apex because it has a longer nose for high access, but allows me to use the short bits, which are more rigid, and gives me just a bit more uh, power delivery. And this thing works great for driving screws, even though it's the quote-unquote impact wrench. And the gearbox does sound pretty nice. Okay, for a power comparison, just running a couple of these not appropriate supertanium uh, bolts. I'm going to handicap the A87. This is supposed to have on paper 27 foot-pounds of por torque more than this unit. And I am going to handicap it with an adapter and making it use a heavier deep well socket versus a short well. Yes, the more, the heavier the sockets and all that stuff, the uh, the more power that you're sucking away from your impact. Always use as mi the minimal amount of accessories possible. But we're just going to uh, do a quick little test here. Wow. Wow. It has the power to do it, but my goodness. First, that was loud, running two impacts. Don't do that without hearing protection. Secondly, uh, the 887 uh, really pounded that in there really fast. Seemingly more than what 27 foot-pounds of torque may indicate, but there's a lot of physics. This has a large diameter hammer, and that gives it a greater moment of inertia. We can see even this was slower and it isn't spinning as fast uh, or as in impacting as many times a second that it was still turning the faster and it was still going to cinch it up. It just seems like it's much less powerful because part of that perception is simply the fact that it has a slower rotational operation, not because it has such a uh, dramatically more of a difference in torque than what they're advertising. It's just a, a 25 foot pounds less torque plus less RPMs make it does, makes it seem a whole lot slower than the bigger unit. Here's an example of the precision mode. So it's supposed to <clears throat> run it down. This is a uh, freewheeling bowl. It's pretty large. It's a 24 millimeter or 15 sixteenths. It's a lock nut. It's pinched at the top, so it's able to run smoothly until right where it hits that. So it's supposed to impact a little bit. So it's for run-up. When you're attaching stuff, you're supposed to be able to run the bolt in, and then as soon as it gets snug, it'll impact a few times and then stop. And if you don't let go, a half a second later, it's just going to deliver full power. See, it was really fast. Man, I'm getting all sorts of paint flying off of this thing. It was a really pretty quick. 
and I just let off on the first impact when it was going to go to full power. So you have to be real careful using it. It's just a half a second, I think, maybe is a little too short for that mode, just because you have almost no time to release. It's like, as soon as it stops, you got to release, otherwise it's just going to blast it. And so you might think, oh, I could use it to run down some really thin valve cover bolts, but man... Uh, you're going to be just a fraction of a second off and it's going to blast and break like a little 10 millimeter. The second function is it's supposed to detect a drop in load once you've uh, gotten a bolt loose. This is a great simulation because there's a lot of resistance right until it gets past that uh, pinch portion for the lock nut and then it just free wheels. So let me get it on there a little bit. Oh, interesting. Oh, running out of socket. All right, we'll see if that freewheeling. Surprisingly enough, that did work. We'll try that one more time. We'll blast this back on. That was actually kind of cool. I like that mode a lot. So did you notice, watch, I'm going to go into that precision mode. I'm going to go full throttle, and it really did detect and prevent the nut from just flying off and then go hit the ground, skidding and going 20 blocks down the street. It really did work. It detected it starting to freewheel and it slowed down to the minimum speed. I actually think that's a pretty cool feature. And here we've jumped down to a quick uh, teardown. Just because I went into such detail with the drill, we don't need to go into as much detail with the motor, but interestingly the interior is a surprisingly different with this electronic switch that has to connect to the controller so we have additional wires reassembling you have to be real careful to make sure this wire gets into this slot here we can do cpa6 gf30 so they are using a nylon body on this versus the polypropylene that was on the drill which i thought was interesting uh i noticed the shape on the fan this is the exact same fan that they're using on the drill but it's on the back so this exhaust on the back and the drill exhaust in the middle more like a traditional tool which is kind of odd what i also found odd is even though this switch is at the top the wires go down here under the switch through a plug back over around the switch and into there so a pretty convoluted long wire the front little flashlight does have a little unpluggable connector right here so you can remove the gearbox. The wall I was mentioning or I was going to mention in the manuals actually says do not touch the batteries and charger, but the tools are still intended to be relatively serviced. That's why they're pretty easy to pop apart just like I'm doing here. Really nice. They've even started I will mention that the gears here are beveled. It's been a long time, a long time coming. Manufacturers would never put little chamfers on the ends of these gears to the planetary gearboxes, and you're always trying to shift and mess with them to try to get them to uh, go together. We have a felt pad to try to keep the gears in the gearbox. We have a little O-ring in there that presses against that uh, boss or protrusion there. So they've been doing some effort to keep it together, and then this will probably have another O-ring that makes it just a little bit tight to get out but you just got to ease it back and forth and it does have an o-ring in there just trying to keep the grease in the gearbox come on now don't pull the have the well the whole thing may come apart in a stack and it may be easier just to do it just like this oh that's actually rather nice to see they do have an o-ring in the front for the anvil to help try to keep the grease in and the grit out that's actually a nice touch the anvil i don't think that's a needle bearing I think that's just a sleeve bearing inside there. And just like my servicing video of the bigger impact, it's just the same impact. They may have added just a little bit of weight. There's a little O-ring that always wants to fall out super easy. This is going to be super greasy. The rear bearing is kind of, you know, it's a tight fit in the back plastic. So it's really just your bog standard two dog uh, impact mecha <laughs> mechanism really is the bog standard. Uh, but it obviously they've uh, probably a lot of manufacturers are now going to triple gear systems versus twin gear systems just because um, gear systems are what's wearing out the most. It's what they're providing the most warranties on. So they finally decide to upgrade the gearboxes to be triple gear, which of course is 50% stronger because these gears actually look just as wide as they've been in the, in the past. There's just an extra gear there. 
Plus, you know, it's a little bit less gear pressure, which makes them last longer. It provides for a better centering because there's now three points of contact instead of two points of contact. And generally a sweeter gear sound. So in conclusion, and magically it's back together, I'm figuring out how to get all the, or a bunch of information across in a more compact video than I'm always willing to make higher detail ones if people wish for it. I think it's overall a pretty good impact driver. It doesn't offer the most power in the market, that's for sure, but I kind of like the uh, the Walt. Uh, I think they have pretty good ergonomics, and it has pretty decent power as far as the modes. I normally run these always in high. In the low mode, I wish they would have made it low and reverse as well as forward, especially for situations where you may be working with counter-threaded fasteners. Imagine that. It's precision drive mode for the impact wrench. Uh, or tuned specifically for the impact wrench, I think it does work as advertised. I think that tuning would be that in the Ford where it runs it softly and then impacts just a few times lightly, that after that half second, rather than just having blast full power, to have it do like a one second ramp up. So it'll run it soft, impact a few times, and you can just hold on to the trigger, and then you can get a few more impacts, but the longer you hold on the trigger, it'll just ramp up to full speed. And yeah, on the quarter-inch hex drivers, there has been a lot of anvil play on some of the DeWalt's. That's for sure. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but we can actually see that they have attempted to improve that on this impact wrench. It's still not perfect. I mean, there's always play in all ink impact mechanisms, in and out. Actually, these Milwaukee corded ones, I'll eventually do a video on, are the only ones that don't have any play. But this is pretty good, you know, from both directions, side to side. Uh, that's just fine. That's just basically the same as most air wrenches. And certainly much tighter than what the anvils were or have been on the actual impact drivers. And that may be also a solution. If you kind of like the DeWalt's, just get an adapter and use the 3 8 wrench because it, has, it definitely has a pretty good anvil. Overall, with the upgraded triple gear, uh, gearbox and the fact that they use the aluminum polymer capacitors which don't have a, a liquid electrolytic in them uh, is a really some positive improvements. It's really a solid tool. Several O-rings they've really been trying and they definitely learned even that wire for this upper switches or this upper control did have a proper high temperature fiberglass protective uh, jacket over the wi high temperature wires Definitely uh, some good engineering touches, you know, DeWalt, you know, at least deserves some credit for this. It's overall in and out actually is a properly built tool, even with the nylon body. Uh, fiberglass reinforced, it's definitely proper. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.